Thank you, Ed. Yeah, and along that vein, uh, our annual conference uh, next year is about a year from uh, now, the end of October 2015 in Santa Fe, New Mexico. And uh, we've trained uh, eye doctors and other health professionals around the entire world in the field of using light therapy. And uh, so if you're interested, we'd love to have you come. And uh, our website is uh, the College of Syntonic Optometry.com and uh, gives more details as the program unfolds. Oops, we lost my... Oh, there we go. All right, so I'm going to give a, a little bit more of an anecdotal uh, case today, uh, a case nonetheless. But uh, just as a little bit of background, I've been working in alternative eye care for almost 40 years. And uh, I've been doing microcurrent for over 20. Uh, 20 years ago, I patented and invented the first microcurrent unit to treat uh, macular degeneration and retinitis pigmentosa. Uh, that device has been licensed to a company called Cyfix, which has been in front of the FDA now for almost seven years with thousands of cases trying to get it passed. And uh, it's really a challenge. It's so difficult to get medical devices through the FDA. So microcurrent has been around uh, quite a while, and uh, it's an amazingly powerful tool. But today I'm going to talk about something a, a little different than microcurrent in this particular case. So uh, this case is a woman who came in the office. Uh, she had a, a nerve uh, paralysis, uh, a sixth cranial nerve, which uh, was a result of a brain surgery. She had no history of any health problems. She had a brain tumor on her right side. And um, as this, uh, during the surgery, they believed that they severed the, uh, some of the, the nerve that innervates one of the muscles of the eye. There are six muscles around the eye that turns the eyes in and out, up and down. And it was the right, uh, the nerve to the right muscle that pulls on this side that pulls the eye out. So because the eye was not a, had no nerve energy to pull the eye out, the eye went in. And it went in a huge amount. So, now, I quantified that it's 40 diopters of what we call esotropia. 40 diopters means her eye was like in like this. I mean, it was totally in when she was completely normal prior to the surgery. So she had constant double vision. Normally, if you have an eye muscle problem, over years, your brain suppresses it. It suppresses the image, and you don't have double vision. But when you have an accident, a traumatic brain injury, or something, which was what this was, uh, damaged the nerve energy to the muscle. The muscle gave out, and the eye was in. Not only was it in, but it was up. So the right eye was in and up, constant double vision. And uh, they, uh, her acuity was reduced a little bit to 2040 in that eye. It had been 2020 prior to that. And so in order to alleviate the double vision, they put a patch over her eye. And uh, first of all, they, they tried to, uh, also another part of that case is that she had an enlarged blind spot in her visual field. When you saw the visual fields um, presented, the campimeter fields, the blind spot was very enlarged in that eye, indicating swelling or damage to the optic uh, nerve in some way. So this muscle, again, was turned in, was, was lacked innervation, turned in. And uh, they had initially prescribed rounds of steroids to try to reduce the inflammation. There had been no success using the steroids. And uh, ultimately, they, then they tried to patch the other eye, the good eye. That didn't do anything. They tried uh, putting uh, prisms in front of her eye to try to get the eye. The eye had no movement in the uh, able to move the eye out at all. So um, she came into the office wearing a patch and, uh, you know, saying that she couldn't function. And, and because of the patch and the eye crossing, she lost her job. She, she was uh, in the entertainment field. And uh, because of the cosmetics of it, uh, they actually let her go. And she was without work at this point. So she was really desperate. So we started to do some treatment. Uh, the first thing we did is we put a what's called a binasal occluder on her. That is, we put a tape in the middle of her eyes, like this. So when the eye was in, she couldn't see double, but yet she could use the eyes peripherally. So that we did, instead of blocking the eye off, we blocked only the nasal portion so the eye was crossed, but then she could see to the sides with that eye. And that just gave, that took away the double vision, and it didn't look as bad as having, because we could put a little tape on the glasses, and it didn't look nearly as cosmetically bad as uh, walking around with a patch. 
Then we began with syntonic phototherapy. So we used different colors of frequencies of light to affect changes in the nervous system, the autonomic nervous system in particular, and also the nerve, nerve energy that supports all the muscle movements. And uh, in this particular case, when you have this type of uh, nerve damage, we use red-orange and we use yellow-green. And we did that daily for about a month, uh, and we just had uh, no success. There was just nothing changing at all. Uh, and it was at that point, then we added a frequency-specific microcurrent. You're running two programs, the concussion program, which is for brain swelling, inflammation, and also the optic nerve protocol. And we were doing that three times a week, and uh, again, after two weeks, there was no change whatsoever. So we started to use a different technology, which I'm going to talk about. But I wanted to uh, share a little story about this, because uh, hopefully you'll find it interesting. Uh, my uh, experience has always been that I believed in uh, team approaches to any kind of health problem, multidisciplinary. I've worked in uh, HMOs. I worked in a couple of healing, uh, multidisciplinary uh, holistic health centers where we all would see the patient, doctors, physical therapists, chiropractors, nutrition, whole body. We would see people and we would work together to come up with solutions for the health problems. And it was always very profound, but it wasn't practical. We, we had these groups, so we had physicians in it also. Um, but it was so expensive to see all of us, and it was so time consuming. But it was a very uh, tremendous experience. And the learning experience and knowing the future, I mean, really, that's where it's, that's the most important. Uh, that's the most powerful way to approach so many health problems. So uh, this, the latest group that I was in was called the Light Group. And uh, this is in Ithaca, New York. And in this group, we had uh, uh, four, four different people, four healing uh, modalities. Uh, the group did these kinds of principles. We created a space using principles of sacred geometry. That is, we set up uh, different, the people were in certain relationships to the uh, magnetic areas of the Earth. Uh, we set up different kinds of uh, body postures using geometric principles. We incorporated with a, uh, a master, a master gem, uh, gem and uh, uh, healer using all kinds of different stones and gems. She would set up gemstones and crystals on different parts of the body, and uh, we would put them in different points in different different kinds of uh, geometric uh, orientations around our, our patients. Uh, we had a physical therapist who would do cranial sacral work, also other kinds of uh, release, uh, m motor releases. Um, we had a, a uh, musician, and she would, uh, very high level musician who would play guitar and also use drums, she would create the music for the patient as they laid there. That is, she would, in a sense, intuitively feel what's coming through. Uh, herself in order to give them the notes that they needed. And uh, that was very, very profound, and she was gifted in that way. And then I was the light therapist, and I would use certain colors of light, uh, all different colors, and I would present them through a geometric uh, kind of applicator. That is, each color had its own unique geometry, and we would place the colored light on different parts of the body. And uh, so in the eyes and also in different parts of the body. And when we applied all these modalities at once, we had amazing results with people. People with, for emotional problems, we had people with intense pain, and they would have remarkable uh, r results. That, that we would alleviate pain, we would have deep healing experiences using all these modalities at once. And you know, it was pretty far out and it was pretty impractical for every use, but we saw patients for about a couple of years, like every month we would re meet and do this. So I was very interested in uh, a device that came as I did a search on the internet. Uh, I was looking to buy another laser because we use low-level lasers in the office. We use uh, microcurrent, we use syntonics, <coughs> nutraceuticals. We have uh, different applications of different kinds of energy modalities when we treat eye disease and trauma and things like that. And so I was looking for lasers to buy another laser and I saw this uh, this laser called the Delta laser, which you've heard about already and are going to hear more about. And in the Delta laser, there was a geometrical presentation of red, yellow, violet, blue, and green, blue, green uh, LEDs. So they had the lights that we commonly use in light therapy. It had uh, pulsed infrared, so for deeper penetration. It had magnetic fields. 
uh, applications and it had ultrasound. So I said, wow, this is the light group in my hand, in a handheld device. I, was, I just couldn't believe it, that somebody had put together an instrument that kind of represented this whole experience I had with the light group. And as a result of that, I had Arzan uh, contacted him and he came with and, with and presented about the Comra therapy, the coherent uh, multi-radiance therapy. And uh, it was, uh, it was, it's been led down a whole path and you've heard about that uh, laser today. Uh, Lori talked about it and you're going to hear more from Arzan as well. So anyway, uh, I just thought I wanted to share that story about how we, uh, how I got in touch with this particular therapy and how it re what it me represented to me. It was like, wow, this, here's something that's in my hand. And so we start, so I told this patient, well, I don't know about nerve damage. We were using the Delta on other kinds of conditions, but I said, let's try it because we're not getting anywhere. So we used two different protocols. Uh, we used optic neuropathy program protocol. That is where you put the Delta laser uh, from different points into the, uh, around the head, the cranium, in towards the eye. Uh, we put the uh, delta laser for five minutes right on the site of the tumor and the surgery uh, for 50 hertz. No, we did not use ultrasound. So after six sessions, um, even the second, third session, she says, you know, my, I, I'm starting not to see double as much. And I said, wow, well, that's great. And then she kept saying it's, it's getting better and better. And so after just, we had her come in three times a week and in two weeks, she was able to actually turn the eyes out. She was regaining movement of the eye where it had been totally para paralyzed, and she started seeing single a lot of the time. And when I measured the degree where it was going in 40 diopters, huge amount of crossing, it was only going in nine. And uh, at far and at near, it was going in about 14. And she was able to pull it out, pull it out more and more. So we did six more sessions, and the crossing totally disappeared. It was, her eye was straight, uh, the vertical was almost gone, and it had been now just, uh, what was that, 12 sessions. So that's about, uh, we've been doing that now for uh, twi three times a week, so that's like four weeks. Her eye is completely straight. So then I had her go away for two weeks, I had her come back, and, uh, and I measured and the crossing was even less. It went from nine to six. Uh, she was having no double vision whatsoever and no discomfort. So released her again, say let's come back in another three weeks and see. So she came back and now there was the six units of crossing was down to two. There was no vertical. So there was no complaints. Her visual acuity was now 20-20. And uh, her, her visual field was now normal. The blind spot had shrunk down to normal. And then I had her leave again and she came back a month later and it, everything was held and now there was absolutely no crossing whatsoever. The eyes were completely aligned. They were actually a little bit out like they're supposed to be. Um, she was overjoyed. Um, she said she felt totally normal now. Uh, she went out and got a job as a disc jockey at a radio station and got on there and started singing our praises on what we did in such a short time when they had offered her no hope. I mean, the, the surgeons were talking eventually trying to cut the eye muscles and pull the eye straight, which of course would not uh, we not do anything, I mean, in terms of the underlying pathology. So um, there was a case where uh, we tried some of the standard things that we do, the syntonics and the, mic and the microcurrent, but when we used the multi-frequency therapy, it seemed to be synergistic. There was a synergy of all these different radiances, and that I think that um, here's a case where multi-radiances were effective when single energy applications were not working. So, in a sense, uh, you know, it's, it's more than, uh, the sum is more than the whole, uh, whole here in terms of the, uh, the therapies. So that was my case, and uh, since I knew it wasn't going to take 20 minutes, I can take any questions if you have any comments. Yes? Did the acuity in, in improve as well? Yeah, the acuity went to 2020. Yeah, it was 2040, it went to 2020. Wow. Yeah, uh -huh. yes? Yes, the eye now had full range of motion, complete restoration. So it was a, it, the, it wasn't a weak muscle; it was a weak. Uh, it was ner no ener nerve energy to that muscle. So now she had full range of motion, right? Uh, 
revitalized muscle. Yeah, well, revitalized nerve. I think it's really, yeah. or muscle, but it's really the, the energy to the nerve. The last Christmas is how many, how long ago was the last Christmas? Oh, no, she came back a year later. It's held. It's, yeah, yeah, there's been no, no regression whatsoever. So it was a complete uh, restoration. Yes. That was, fifth, I think, five, five, and then 50, the frequency. Oh, three times a week. Yeah, she was from out of town, so yeah, we did it three times a week. Yes. And where did you place it? So the, it was placed, <coughs> the, the, the laser, you, come, you sweep these points in towards the eye, and then it was placed on the eye, and then it was placed on the site of where the surgery was, which was in this area where the tumor was relieved. Yeah. I'm sorry, what? That was a 905 laser, right. 